I really enjoy using film cameras because I think I grew up with film and I understand film. I like discal. I use discal photography a lot for work and it's a fantastic media. But I still like that sort of sense of knowing that you are using a material which is directly influenced by light and that you can go completely manual sometimes. Um, and the other thing with film cameras, they often have a character and some cameras are very different. The camera I'm going to talk about today I have found to be quite a different experience and I wasn't expecting it. This camera took me completely by surprise. I've got several boxes with cameras and I sometimes forget what's actually in the box and this box of compact cameras had this one in, a AZ220 by Olympus and I hadn't paid much attention to it. I think I thought of it just as a common or garden um, compact. And I, although it says wide angle on it, I hadn't actually looked in detail. And because m most compact zoom cameras are of the range 38 to 70 mil or something like that. Well, this one is actually 28 mil to 56 mil. So I would say that's a true wide angle camera. And I don't know of many compacts which have this range 28 to 56. If we take a look at the camera, it is quite bulky. It came out in 1992, which was, I would say, the height of the film compact. Digital is just creeping in but isn't huge in 92, 93. I would say Discord really took off in compact cameras about the year 2000. Um, perhaps a tiny bit later than that. So um, the film market is still big when this was launched but it's very different to the MU's and the other Olympuses out at the time. And in a sense, you wonder why was there such a need for a wide angle camera? And I think it's um, traveling um, for scenic shots, for landscapes. I think there was a demand there. And if we take a closer look with the camera, we also see that we have a panoramic um, device on here. And this was at the time that Kodak came out with the advanced system, which again gave you that choice. And wide angle panoramic shots were very popular at this time. So let's have a look at the camera. It doesn't take the most convenient battery. I'm going to start with the battery and we can see the battery there. I think they are the one, two, threes which can, are a little bit dear. Would have been nice if they had been AA batteries. If we turn it on and we have the on switch there, we have the control of the zoom at the front, which again is a little bit different than most cameras at this time had a zoom there. So a bit different to have it there. And when I've been using this, it's not the most convenient, but you do get used to it. Loading a film is very straightforward. You can see here, pop the film here, the trailer into there, close and it rides on immediately. All the gears don't sound that good to me, but never mind. I just wanted to open the back again to show you this part here, operated by this lever here if you want a panoramic shot. Although it's a bit of a cheap panoramic because all it is doing is just closing the frame. You have a flush and what's nice about this as well, you have a auto fill, a off, a fill in and a nighttime mode. So you've got a range of selection there for your flush, which you don't get on all compact cameras. It is bulky compared to other compact cameras of its time. But having said that, you do get this wonderful opportunity of having this 28 to 55 mil lens. And I really enjoyed having a go with this camera. 
and looking at some of the images I'm just going to talk about some of the images let's talk about some of the images let's get them up here the exposure system worked extremely well here you have a uh, high street just around the corner from where I live well this is high street Fordington in Dorchester in Dorset and um, it's a bit difficult to I'm a bit slanty here but a lot of the buildings are a bit slanty this is the old foundry again this is on right angle and I really enjoyed the fact I could fit everything in and everything's relatively sharp and we have got quite contrasting light here and it's coping with these I do love this this um, lightness on the wall is actually the light reflecting back from a um, window op opposite the street um, unfortunately the detail of the slightly precarious angle poise standard light is missed it sort of fades in in this photo of this house here but I was slightly intrigued why someone should just leave this lamp outside again I hope you agree it's quite sharp and I quite like the detail here this is St George's Church again we could have done something about those horizontals see I was wrong about the time it's three o'clock ten to three but I quite like the shadows here and again the format is nice walking down the hill Fordington Green now this was where I've had to play about with the um, panoramic um, but it looks to me like I might have it on about 50 mil there into the light and it's coping with into the light on Fordington Green we have got a bit of um, haze there but it's coping Again, it could be a tiny bit sharper but that's not bad looking down the hill slightly strange here about this light leak here I think the rubber on the window at the back isn't completely flat and I think that is what has happened on this one stop shot I quite like the tonal range maybe a little bit of detail going at the edge as I said this is FP4 developed for 11 and a half minutes in ID 11 and just scanned using a sort of uh, a um, basic scanner autumn time getting into the light not ideal but I quite like the effect so a very enjoyable little walk around Dorchester particularly nice to get the shadows of this um, light late October afternoon and as I said I was surprised with how much I actually enjoyed the camera it gave me a perspective it allowed me that right angle view and for this subject matter I found that this was absolutely ideal and it suited my mood as well so if you do find uh, Olympus Zoom AF220 don't do what I nearly did and discount it as a rather lumpy compact why not take it out for a film and see how you get on with it thank you for watching